How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Yes, glory. God is doing mighty things. The battle for position continues. Continues. It doesn't stop. You must battle for position. Compromise is the number one killer of a Christian. Why? Because when a person compromises, they fall into pride. They fall into darkness. They drift. They become lukewarm. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5. We know that righteousness and justice is invading the earth. We know Jesus is approaching. And shaking is going on. Amen? There is a shaking. If you haven't been shaken, you will. Glory. Ephesians chapter 5. Start at verse 1. Ephesians 5 verse 1. Glory, glory. Is everybody there? Therefore be what? Imitators of God as dear children. Imitators of Christ's character. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. And offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God in Christ. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Now, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord in everything. Every decision. Every thought. Everything. What is acceptable to the Lord? If we're not looking at those areas, we fall out of order. What is acceptable to the Lord? Lord, is this acceptable to you? Now, there are things that he will answer you with and he won't answer you with because there are things that are automatically understood. If you come to a red light, you don't have to wait for the Lord to tell you to stop. It's understood. Amen? There are certain things of law. This is where people practice lawlessness because they're doing things without acknowledging. They're doing things without asking. They're doing things out of order. They're assuming. Assuming is compromise. Everyone say assuming is compromise. The more you assume, the more you can't, God can't trust you. The more you compromise, the more you drift. Think about how many times people come into worship services. They come to a Friday night service and they can't even finish half of it. They, they, they take, take off, they leave, they do whatever. They come into a worship service. They come to touch God and to play. See, but they're coming for a touch and because God doesn't touch them right away, they leave. Because there's really no relationship. They're takers, not givers. See, you and I must be a giver of ourself and of our praise to him. When we quit worshiping, that's insulting. You know, one of the things that we talked about in our last teaching that, you know, what brings more light? What is the key to more light in our life? What is the key in the area of break, full breakthrough, true breakthrough? Assembling. Assembling is the key to true breakthrough. Without assembling, you won't have a true breakthrough. You'll have partial. See, God wants you plugged somewhere. 
Why? To be accountable, responsible, and to be trained up and be sent. You can't do that if you're all over the place. It's impossible. You'll never gain the trust because you're to be trained up. Does everybody understand that? We're to be trained up to be sent. That's why when people come through our discipleship, we ask for nine months of training and then on our job training for one year. That's an apprentice. Without being an apprentice, you will never be fulfilling in a position that you can be trusted. It will take you for a long time. See, but the enemy loves to step in and get someone to move without being sent. Does everybody understand that? And it causes problems. Is everybody okay? Oh, praise God. Let's go a little further. Verse 6 again. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them, for you were once darkness. Amen. In other words, you and I were controlled by darkness. See, under darkness, we are controlled by darkness. But now you are the light of the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. Anything that is not led by the Spirit, hello, is flesh. Vanity. Have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose. Expose, expose, expose. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the what? Light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are what? Days are evil. So he says, imitate Christ's character. Walk in love. There are sons of disobedience that practice lawlessness, unrighteousness, and wickedness. Anything that is not character of Christ is a character of wickedness. Amen? Members. These are members. In other words, members in our body. Members that are controlled by darkness. If not exposing darkness, then there's promoting darkness. Every day of your life, there should be an exposure of something. Every day. If not, then you're not doing self-examination. Exposing. Let's talk about it. Exposing is to bring light in a dark, controlled environment or character member. That's what exposing is. It's to bring light. It's to bring light in a dark, controlled environment or character member. Hmm. Now, what happens is light will bring an awakening from a controlled sleep caused by darkness. What do they do? They're dumbing down character members, our character members. And sometimes these things can be originated just by compromise. People try to live a life of management. It could be inherited, self-righteousness, pride, disobedience, rebellion. Once awakened, then comes unveiling. Unveiling cannot come unless there's an awakening, but first there must be light, awakening, then unveiling. There's got to be exposure, which brings what? Light, then awakening, then unveiling. Once awakened, then comes the unveiling, which is a glimpse of reality. 
What's it to do? That glimpse of reality is to come to remove the root of controlled darkness, which then brings true sight. Because what happens is an individual can't see truly clear. Once awakened, then comes the unveiling, which is a glimpse of reality. It's to remove the root of controlled darkness. Once that root is beginning to be removed, then it brings sight, true sight. Other than that, it's partial sight. In other words, can't see clearly. That's why people don't see clearly or are not detailed enough in the spirit. They're not detailed enough in the spirit because of a lack of unveiling wickedness. Basically, that's what it is. Because anything that is not righteous is wicked. Even the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is wicked. Amen? Unveiling is the process of removal. So we are in a process right now of unveiling wickedness. The world is in the process of unveiling wickedness right now. Again, wickedness, to, people don't realize that wickedness is a multi-level definition. Because it can have a form of goodness, and it can have a form of godliness, but it's still wicked. Because of what is behind it, what is influencing it, what is controlling it. Amen? That's why in this, he says, look at their sleep. Do you, know, you know, did you ever notice when you first wake up in the morning, you don't see too clear right, right then and there? You're trying to come out of the stupor. Amen? You're frogged out dreamed out. Unless you have some kind of crazy dream, you wake up and go, wow! You know? But other than that, we're, we're coming out. And we're finally, then you're reaching for the light if it's dark in there and you're trying to turn on the light, right? Now, now things are being exposed. Okay. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Where the heck am I? You know? Please help me pray before I kill somebody. So in this, we want to reconnect as quick as possible. We want to connect as fast as possible. So there's that process. So Why? So we can get into a position of unveiling. What, what's unveiling? That is the process of removal. See, you can expose, but not remove. 2 Corinthians 4. People that are ruled by emotional decisions have not unveiled. People who are easily offended are not unveiled. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1, let's speak it. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But, if we, have, but we have renounced the hidden things of what? Shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is what? Veiled, it means it's hidden. It is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. Whose minds the God of this age, who is Satan, has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel, or the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So it hasn't been exposed. There's not light going there. They're unveiled. They're, not, they're still veiled. They're not unveiled yet. That's why in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there's a process of unveiling, but it isn't complete. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is, the, for it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of Christ in the face of Jesus. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. When there's areas that are not unveiled, it's self-power. Still relying on 
own abilities, talents, ways, so forth. Self agendas, not scheduling around God's will, scheduling around your will. The veiled areas of wickedness is causing destruction. They are hidden and blinded to man, not able to remove or unveil until the awakening. There's got to be an awakening first. What do you mean by awakening? I'm awakening of something's not right there. See, everybody else might know it, but you might not. Second Corinthians chapter 3. It says, but their minds were what? 2 Corinthians 3, verse 12. Is anybody there yet? I mean, you didn't. I'm not there. 2 Corinthians verse 12. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Therefore, are we all there now? Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was what? Passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the re reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in the anointing. In the what? In the anointing. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their hearts. In other words, hidden, blindness. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the what? Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. But we all with unveiled face. That doesn't mean your face has been removed. It means the old man's face has been removed. Amen. Beholding in the mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the image, same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Old man face has been removed. It's time to unveil every member so the Holy Spirit has full access, not partial. Why? Because we don't want partial sight. We want full sight. We need to be more detailed in these days right now. You know, in construction... It is important that you are detailed. That's why you have a crew that comes in at the end to be more detailed because there's guys that do framing and drywall and whatever. They just, there's certain things and they just slap everything together as quick as possible. Then there's the detail. But in the spirit realm, that's not how it is. We need to be detailed first. Detail all the way. What is this? Where'd you come from? What's this? What's that? What's, does everybody understand? What's influence? Who, who told me that? Where'd you come from? We need to be more detailed. Is everything I'm getting ready to do acceptable to you? That's when we set him before us. If he is not set before you, and that's our responsibility, then you're not detailed. Amen? You can't be detailed if the Lord is not before you in everything. And you should be seeing him saying, go here, go here, do this, do that. Amen? But if you're out of order, it isn't going to work. How many of you know the devil comes as an angel of light? Amen. You won't be able to discern them. Is everybody okay? Turn to James chapter 1. Unveiling wickedness. Whatever's not righteous is wicked. Amen. See, we gotta be able, we gotta begin to see this this way. Whatever is not of the spirit is wicked. Whatever is not pleasing God is wicked. James one, verse twenty one. See, this is what we're seeing all over the world. Well, look at there's an awakening, isn't there? Why? Because there's exposing, lights coming. Amen? There's an awakening, then there's coming an unveiling, which is removal. We're seeing it all over the world. What are the un what's God doing? He's unveiling wickedness, isn't he? 
Amen? James 1, 21. Therefore lay aside all what? Filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Now what's your soul? Your mind, your will, your emotions, your imagination, your conscience and subconscious. Amen? But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. There's a lot of talkers, but not enough doers. In other words, you may know the word, but you don't practice the word. That's what he's saying. You must live the word. But it must be aligned with the spirit. Because people try to live the word. They're so disciplined. Amen. You can be over-disciplined. Why? Because then you can't be led by the spirit. You're led by the letter. And there's a difference. Now you become religious. There's a difference. That's why the letter kills and the spirit brings life. Because when we are detailed in the spirit, we're always looking for direction. We're always looking for conviction. Always. We're willing to be chastened. Why? Because everything that we do, we want to please him. No matter what it is. My decisions, everything we do, we want to please him. You know, I was brought up in a ministry with miracle signs and wonders. I saw all kinds of things happen. I was a part of the prayer group, did all kinds of stuff, went to hospitals, prayed for people, saw miracles, all kinds of things. I was a part of the uh, morning prayer group and so forth, so we were there. I mean, I was up at 4, and then prayer was at 6 with the group. But besides, I prayed two hours before I got there, and then we broke bread. We did all kinds. Of, it was just a, it was a training process for me. I was around many elders. I was probably the youngest buck there. And I was called many things. I was on fire for God. I loved the Lord. But loving the Lord and on fire God doesn't put you in position. Obedience does. Submission does. I wanted to pray for everyone. And I, but I had to wait. Finally, I got invited with the pastor to go to the hospitals. When I went to the hospital with him and so forth, I began to pray for people. Unfortunately, they died. What's going on? He says, what do you mean? They got healed. And then, all of a sudden, boom, things changed. People got healed of tumors, cancer, all kinds of things. Things began to change. I remember one morning, I was in, we were at morning prayer, and, and the Lord put on my heart to go pray for this girl. He said, I want you to go lay your hands on her feet. But he did this to test me. I wanted to go over there and lay hands on that person, pray for her. And I got a quickening in my spirit. And I went up to the pastor. I said, would it be okay if I went over and prayed for this person? And he said, no. I said, okay. And I went, and I went back to my seat and said, okay. My, my trust is in you, Lord. And that was it. I went home and just went about my business, whatever. That Friday night, we had a, a prayer meeting. And this girl shows up in my home. And uh, so after we got done praying, the Lord said to me, now I want you to go over and lay your hands on her feet. I said, okay. I went over and laid my hands on her feet. Nice thing I know, her whole continent has changed. And I asked her, I said, do you mind if I pray? Man, her whole continent has changed. And this demon came up and said, I'm going to kill her. I said, whoa. Immediately, I started casting out devils. I didn't know what else to do. I knew there was a demon. And it boasted how it's been in her fam its mother, its family's generation for 30 years. She was Jewish. It boasted in how it killed all of these people in her family. Man, I was angry now. Man, we cast out about 30 demons out of that girl. And then one came up and said, where will I go? I said, whoa. Yeah, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Tried to mess with me. 
and said, come on in the name of Jesus. This girl was in a bubble, lived in a bubble. She was allergic to everything. She was getting to the point where she was allergic to water. She was dying. And it was a process of God unveiling for her because she was seeking. She had accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. They found her on a track. She wanted to kill herself. That's a whole powerful testimony. Now she travels all over the world. But again, there's that area of submission, obedience, and learning how to be detailed. Not moving how you feel, not moving how you think, not moving what you hear, but there are things that God is expecting me and you to do. This is called detail. It takes training. I'd be sitting in services and the Lord would say to me, what would you do? He, I would see somebody say, what would you do? I'd say, whatever you want, Lord. He said, uh-uh. He let that go by for a little bit. Then he would want to know what I would do. And he would either rebuke me chasten me, correct me, love me, and then put me on the right path of what to do. Look at what he did with all the prophets. What do you see? What would you do? What was this? Doesn't he ask everyone? Yeah. He's asking us the same thing. That's how he brings us through training. See, people are not willing to go through training. Amen. It was years of training. It doesn't stop. It's continuous. And unveiling is continuous. Exposing is continuous. Death is daily. Glory. <laughs> that never stops either. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? All right, what verse are we on? Anybody know? 22, let's go. But be doers of the word and not hearers, only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's an idiot. He is like a man observing his natural face in the what? Mirror. Why? Because it became veiled again. Does everybody understand it's not unveiled? Ooh. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Why? Because it was unveiled, now it's not. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty. Anybody remember what the perfect law of liberty is? Amen. Deny yourself. Pick up the cross and follow. What does that mean? Lay down your life, pick up his life, and follow. Amen? Oh, yes. If anyone among, uh, but if he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hero but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If any among you thinks he's religious and can't bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion for God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and keep oneself unspotted from the world of influence. Oh, yes. Jude. Jude, verse 5. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of bondage, which is called Egypt, after he destroyed those who did not believe or follow. Hmm. Verse 6. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under the control of darkness for judgment of the great day. Does everybody understand it? Under the control of what? Darkness. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Wow. 
Likewise, all these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Wow. And these, they, uh, again, they are under control of darkness. They have been veiled again. They've been what? Veiled. 2 Timothy 3. Is everybody okay? Oh, happy days. 2 Timothy chapter 3. In verse 1, how many of y'all know we're in the last days? I hope so. I mean, I hope that you know that we're in the last days. I know we're in the last days. I'm telling you. If you don't, you know now, right? But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Why would there be perilous times coming? Because it's a process of unveiling. That's what's happening. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to, to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people do what? Turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible men and women, loaded down with sins and led away with various loss. They're always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They're not able to come to the understanding of the truth, which brings light because they are still veiled. They're asleep. They're under control of darkness. Learning, but not practicing. There's a difference. First John chapter 3. Glory. First John chapter 3 in verse 4. Whoever commits sin also commits what? Lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. That means not under the law. How many of y'all, every place has got a law? When you go work at a certain location, there's a law. They got certain criteria, certain orders, certain things in how they're established, no matter what. If you don't obey the law, you're lawless. Amen. Same thing in ministries. If you're not finding out how things are handled and you go there, you better find out. And, and anywhere I go, number one, I don't let anybody lay hands on me. Even if the pastor says, everybody lay hands on that person, I'm going to say, you're out of order, brother. Uh-uh. Unless I personally know that pastor or I know what's going on, I do not let nobody lay hands on me. You never let a stranger lay hands on you. Oh, God sent me, oh, really? Oh, God told me, oh, really? God never interrupts himself. Never. Do never let anyone lay hands on you that you do not know or has been sent by the authority of that location. Never. That's out of order. Does everybody understand? And you don't want to receive what they got. <laughs> How do you know they're not smoking behind closed doors? How do you know they're not watching pornography? You don't know what they're doing. You don't know what spirits they're carrying. Next thing you know, you'll be fighting all the things that they got. And they may be, might be, they don't even know. They may be having all of these demons in them that are trying to get into you. So you be careful. Amen? Oh, happy days. 1 John 3, verse 4, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is what? No sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins, he has neither seen him nor known him. 
Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That means that word might means you got to cooperate with him. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In other words, sin no longer has dominion over you. It doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. Amen. And this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is a message that you've heard from the beginning, that you should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers were what? Righteous. Do not marvel, my brother, and if the world hates you, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brethren abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Lawlessness is a life without divine order or priority. You may be disciplined but out of order. Lack of discernment is lack of spiritual detail according to kingdom order. These places need to be unveiled in the members of the soul. You may do what the word says, but out of time and out of order. Amen? Philippians 4. Philippians chapter 4. Anything that is not of God's time is not God's will. Philippians 4, 4. Unveiling wickedness. Again, we've got to get to a point where we realize that anything that is not practicing justice is right, of righteousness is wicked. We cannot compromise that anymore. It must be unveiled. Verse 4, rejoice in the Lord when? Always. Even when things aren't going right? Even when you're going through trials and tribulations? Even when somebody broke in your car and stole everything? Even when you ran over the dog? Yes, no. <laughs> Rejoice in the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah, I ran over my dog. No, I... <laughs> I'm only kidding, though. I don't want to run over my dog or step on my bird. <laughs> I'd be upset with myself. <laughs> But anyways, I would rejoice later that they went home. <laughs> I could convince myself of that. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Okay, two things. Rejoice, and what else? Gentleness. Joyfulness and gentleness. Joyfulness and gentleness. The Lord is at hand. Why? A person that's joyful and gentle, trusting in God always. No matter what's going on, you know, Lord, you got the last say. Does everybody get this? That's relationship. You know. I don't have to explain myself. You know, Lord. Does everybody get this? It's so important that that relationship so, be so tight you know. Don't get goofy and granola, you know. You know. Everything must line up. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is in him. But be what? Be anxious for everything. Be anxious for what? Nothing. Nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. 
Now, that's powerful. Rejoice, be gentle, not anxious, not provoking, not demanding, not complaining, not grumbling. All of those are fruits of no trust. Oh, I trust them, but I need to have it. That ain't trust. It's not trust at all. Those are veiled areas of fear and pride that need to be unveiled. Because fear is anxious. Amen? And pride is protected by fear. And pride protects the old man, which is loads of anxious. Wants everything right now. If it can't see it, can't have it, it bursts. It bursts. Those are areas that need to be unveiled. You might not see it, but everybody else does. Amen? Let's go a little further. Glory. Verse 8, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, report. If there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Hebrews 12. Hebrew. Glory. Hebrews 12, verse 5. Unveiling wickedness. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons and daughters. My children, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the, love, whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every child of his whom he receives. If you endure the chastening, God deals with you as sons and daughters. For what son or daughter is there whom a father does not chasten? Furthermore, we have had human fathers who, oh, but if you are without chastening, verse 8, I'm sorry, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons or daughters. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect, shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasten us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we may bear be partakers of his what? Holiness. Now, no chastening seems joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields a peaceable fruit of what? Righteousness to those who are being trained by it. Listen, you and I are being trained by chastening. It's amazing how many people run when they, you know, you're judging me. You betcha. I'm going to judge your fruits, your words, and your actions, and your attitude, and motive, and desires. I'm going to judge every part of it. Because I'm a fruit inspector. And we're in fruit inspection. I'm not going to bring judgment on you, but I'm going to judge it. Why? That determines whether I can trust you or not. And every one of us should do the same thing. Can you trust someone that's anxious? Heck no. Remember, chastening is to expose the veiled wickedness, the veiled wicked seeds and characters. Must be, they must be, you, you and I must be willing to be trained by chastening, by rebuke, by correction, direction. It brings what? Protection. Amen? It's training. If we're not willing to be trained, God can't use us. Amen? Does everybody understand that? You may think God's using you. He'll use a donkey. But when it comes time to stand before him, it won't be credited. 2 Corinthians 13. Oh, 
Oh, yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Everyone say the first words. Examine yourself. Not your neighbor right now. Okay, this is examine yourself. You got to examine yourself first before you can examine anyone else. Too many people are examining everybody else and not willing to examine themselves. Examine yourself as whether you are in the spirit or not. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified, dumbed down, misled, deceived, blinded, or veiled? But I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Now I pray to God that you do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that you should do what is honorable, though we may seem disqualified. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong, and this also we pray that you may be complete. Therefore I write these things, being absent lest, being present, I should use sharpness according to the authority which the Lord has given me for edification and not for destruction. Finally, brethren, farewell, become complete, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. I can tell you this, when people received the letter from Paul, they were grateful that he didn't show up. Amen. I'm telling you, because when he showed up, he was stern. He was on fire for God. He didn't take no garbage. Do it or go. Look at what the letters all say about it. He rebuked them big time. Amen? Look at where he came from. Remember, he was Saul, a persecutor, a murderer. The guy was a maniac, religious, veiled, controlled by darkness. And then God had to slam him, slap him in the head, knock him off his horse, and he was still veiled. He accepted Jesus but he was still veiled. Hello? Fasted three days, he was still veiled. Was separated from everyone, still veiled. What? Three days. And then Ananias showed up. Laid his hands on him because the Lord sent him. But see, Saul already had a dream about it. So he was expecting it. Does everybody understand this? So Saul was willing to accept what was about to happen. Ananias laid hands on him. Saul got baptized in the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. Well, it doesn't say that. Yes, but Paul said, I wish you all prayed his tongue as much as I do. So he got baptized in the Holy Spirit with tongues. That's the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Is everybody okay? So... To be veiled is to be blind of wicked influence unless repentance is applied in all areas of lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. It is the start of self-examination. Allowing the Holy Spirit conviction and chastening to bring light exposure in the process of unveiling. Many too religious, <laughs> many individuals become too religious, prideful, able to see in others but not themselves. We are in a time of awakening and the process of unveiling. It is a big time right now. Very big. It's global. It's happening. The body of Christ, it's happening. God is raising up headless warriors that live out of the spirit, not out of their heads, not out of their knowledge. He's not so concerned how much knowledge we have. He wants to know that you know him that you can set him before you and you can follow him, that you can submit to all things. Amen? In Revelation chapter 12. In 
in verse 13. Revelation 12, 13. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Now when a dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, what happened when he got unveiled? What did he get removed from? Heaven. Does everybody understand that? He was not happy because he had been in hiding, attacking. And the Lord said, that's it. Everybody's going to see you now. He got unveiled. He didn't get free. He got unveiled from being hidden. Now he was going to be seen. Oh, hallelujah. When the dragon saw that he had been unveiled, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place. That's called the rapture where she is nourished for a time and times and a half time, which is three and a half years, from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. No way. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who kept the commandments, which were Jews, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, those who accepted Jesus. Why? Because many are going to get saved after the rapture. These will be those who will be left behind. Does everybody understand that? The wings, the two wings are associated with Moses and Elijah. Those who are dead in Christ will rise first, and those who are alive will be taken up. In three and a half years, we will be with the Lord, and then we will return with the Lord to fulfill the Feast of Atonement. But this will be the Feast of Trumpets that we will be taking. Does everybody understand? So in this, the rest will be attacked. There will be the three and a half years of great tribulation. They will attack this earth. Why? Because the restrainers will be removed who is us. There'll be no more restraining of evil. Evil will have its way. And there will be those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior because they realize they missed the boat out. There'll be Jews and Christians that will be persecuted. Dragon was unveiled, removed from the unseen realm, angered at the, at the unveiling, and persecuted the Jews and Christians left behind that took too long to unveil wickedness. That's why they were left behind. Matthew 7. Matthew chapter 7. God is using men and women of God in authority to awaken. We have a president that God is using. That's why it's called the Great Awakening. Amen? It's not just him. There's many of them. We're seeing wicked being unveiled everywhere. Everywhere. And Matthew 7, verse 13. What does it say? Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are what? Ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. See, we're fruit inspectors. Do men gather grapes from the thorn bushes or figs from the thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree cannot bear bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and then thrown in the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, 
but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice what? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock, which is the anointing. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not maintain the anointing, will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat down that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Listen, the anointing is always going to bring unveiling. It always brings unveiling. And I'm going to close it, John 3. Gospel John 3, verse 18. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. He who believes, which means to what? Follow. In him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were what? Evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be what? Exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, and that they have been done in God and not in the flesh. Unveiling wickedness is the process of unveiling, which is happening right now. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that the seed that's been imparted in us grow and bear fruit for your glory. We ask that you'll keep us and position us into the place where we become more detailed in the spirit. Be willing to accept correction. And be willing to self-examine so that all wickedness can be unveiled, removed from our members, and replaced and given full access to the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and straight. Stay blessed.